Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. And a lot of you have messaged me asking me about the setup that I use for events, what all it entails, how it's put together. So that's what this video is gonna be about, guys. I did a video a long time ago, I think it was over a year ago, maybe, uh, when I was building the setup. And you can go back and watch those if you want, but the camera technology and editing's gotten a lot better. So hopefully this video will suffice and I can explain everything to you about how I've got it set up. So in order to do that, we've got to go outside. I've got the trailer out here getting ready to start going through my inventory bins, making sure everything is where it needs to be. And I've got everything stocked back up because as you know, we have that Peach Jam event coming up uh, next weekend. So as of today, I am seven days from the largest event that our county sees. And so I've got to be ready. That's what I've been in here doing is working on that, getting everything ready. Uh, I got to get the booth, get the machine out. I got to clean it. I got to get all that stuff ready so that when we show up for the event, everything's a go. So if that's something you're interested in, guys, stick around and we're going to go outside and show you what I'm working with. All right, guys. So today I'm also trying to get a little sun. Uh, I caught a lot of slack last night at the Friday night event because I don't have a lot of tan. Uh, don't wear, I wear my sleeves normally. I wear long pants. So guys, spare me. I've already heard it. I know my legs are white. That is the whole purpose of me wearing shorts and a tank top today. Just try to get a little sun. Uh, all the guys I work with, it was just utter chaos last night. They're ridiculing me about my complexion. So just bear with me on this, guys. I know the sun's bright and it's making it worse. But hopefully you can bear with me and we can get through this. First of all, this is a setup. So if you're ever in the Chilton County area and you see this uh, F-150, and guys, yes, it's a Ford, okay? I'm a Ford guy, I like Ford. So you Chevy guys, Dodge guys, leave me alone. All right, this is the trailer that, I purchased this trailer last year after doing four or five events using my lawnmower trailer. And I know that's a big expense, guys, if you don't already have one but it is a lifesaver for this type of stuff. If you can get it to the point to where, you know, your business needs to spend a little money to invest to avoid paying as much taxes, this is a good way to go. Uh, it's very handy. Once I get everything set up in there, all I have to do is hook to it and go to the event. Uh, I bought this from my buddy Big O here in Clanton. He sells enclosed trailers and all other kinds of trailers and so forth. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a good purchase. Now, like I said, I did have to save. I did have to stretch it out over a period of a year to be able to set back enough money to pay for it. But in the long run, it did benefit me. But trust me, guys, when I, the first few events I did, I used my pickup truck and my little utility trailer and just prayed that it didn't rain and made sure that I had tarps in case it did. So I know where, I know where you're coming from if you don't have one of those. So I'm not, I'm not ditching on anybody that doesn't have one. But that's the setup, and I'm going to move over and take you inside, show you how it looks when I get to an event. But I'm going to go ahead and pull the machine and everything out because, like I said, I've got to clean everything and service it to get it ready for this weekend. So let's move over here and uh, show you what it looks like. All right, guys, I know the lighting out here is terrible. It's uh, like 1030 in the morning here. The sun is in exactly the wrong place, but I got a lot of stuff I got to get done today, so I'm trying to knock this video out. But the one thing that I will tell you that I've, I've seen a lot of other people at events and when I go there, they're unloading and loading their stuff. And if at any way possible, having this ramp gate is a big, big help, especially if you're going to be building something like what I have uh, with the portable clack shack, because you don't want to have to pick this thing up and set it in there. Uh, you want to be able to roll it in there and uh, not have that problem. So I'm just going to show you how it comes out. Just to kind of give you an idea when you're building this thing, the things that you need to keep in mind uh, if you decide to build something like this. So when the ramp comes down, of course, there it is. Uh, that is that is my setup. That is my configuration. I've got to flip the little gate out. Now, I keep an extra stool in here. Uh, this is one of my little homemade stools that I use when I'm engraving. So I keep one of those in there so I don't have to load things and unload them. Uh, of course, at any event, it's a good idea to have yourself a little wagon. This wagon contains uh, a lot of the small things that I use on a regular basis. But in the event that I do leave something in the trailer and it's a long way and it's heavy, this thing's really handy to be able to just stack those boxes on this trailer 
and or this little wagon and bring them into the event. Primarily the stuff that's on here, I leave them on there because I unload all my boxes. I know exactly what I'm taking to the event. I've got my boxes set up, you'll see that. So typically the stuff that's in here now is what's always in here unless I need it for something else. I'll take that stuff out and use the wagon. So we're getting the wagon out of the way. All right, so once I get that stuff out of there, the next thing to come out, because it really takes up a lot of room, is the, the, the actual portable clack shack itself. Now I do have a gap right here where the door lets down. So I had to fashion myself a little piece of wood to go there so that my, my wheels that are on the machine won't fall in that hole. Because when they do, if you don't have anybody to help you, and a lot of times I'm by myself, uh, when them wheels fall down in there, you just gotta go back and forth to try to pick it up and get it out of there. And it is a little heavy. Uh, now, I've built this thing to where it's kinda like a wheelbarrow, guys. This end, it's, it's basically just a square tabletop that I use three quarter inch plywood to make the tabletop out of. Uh, two by four frame primarily, just to frame it out. I could've went bigger with the bigger lumber, but guys, I felt like two by fours were sturdy enough, but I didn't, and without adding a whole lot more weight to it. Uh, the, the, the majority of, other than the frame, the, the, the plywood, the majority of this wood is stuff I've cut off my sawmill. Uh, some of it is pine. I think there's some poplar involved, but I tried to keep it light. So these two by fours are actually made out of poplar. Uh, if you're familiar with poplar, poplar is actually really weather tolerant. It's a strong wood. It's used a lot in framing of RVs because it is it's strong, but yet it resists moisture. It resists twisting. Uh, if it does get wet, it doesn't twist as bad. So that's why I went with poplar two by fours. A lot of the trim is pine just because I wanted that pine look. I think this is actually a piece of uh, Chinese fur. But anyway, we'll get that thing out and not get all hung up in the woodworking aspect of it. Uh, the one thing that I did have to consider is the height. Uh, it was gonna cost me a lot more money to get a taller trailer. So I had to sacrifice the height of my setup to make sure that it would fit in the trailer. And I'd actually built this before I got the trailer, so there was some adjustment that had to be made. So here we go. I literally have this thing to where it will barely, and when I say barely, it barely fits through the door. Like I said, I had bought the trailer after I had built this, and so I had to go back and kind of retrofit everything to make it work. But once you get it onto the gate, it's pretty easy to get it out of the truck from that point forward. All right, guys, so looking at it from back there, I'm gonna give you an overview, and I'll try to drop some pictures up top of some of the events where I've taken pictures of the setup after I have everything out on the table. Uh, when I built this, I was trying to stay within the parameters of 10 to 15 feet as far as my work area. So with the size of this table, it'll fit under a 10 by 10 uh, tent or a 10 by 15 or 20 by 20, if, depending on <clears throat> which one or how big the space is or whatever. But the surface of the top here, just to kind of give you a run through, is 48 inches. And guys, you guessed it, that's because that's the width of a sheet of plywood. So I made it 48 inches deep. That way I do have, even if I'm only in a 10 by 10 spot, I still have a pathway to where I can come from the front to the back if needed without encroaching on somebody else's area. Now, the length, I did shorten the length of the overall table up. The top here is only about 70 and a half inches long. So, and, and, and I use these uprights basically just for decorations and to be able to hang things and, you know, just make the booth look better. Uh, I will be doing a few little tweaks to the setup. Uh, I've got a few hoses and cables and stuff that I want to clean up a little more today, uh, as well as I got to take the X tool out and clean it really good get all of the debris and stuff out of the enclosure. I had a couple of spiders, build spider webs in there that I gotta clean up. Uh, but everything stays in the trailer that goes with this setup. And I know if you don't have multiple machines or multiple computers, you're not gonna be able to do that. But the monitor, I have a monitor here. Oh, if I don't fall, guys. Uh, the monitor here, this is kind of my customer monitor. And I've got this monitor on a swing arm so that I can swing it in and out, get it out of the way. Uh, or if I'm doing something, you know, playing, I can play my YouTube videos up here. I can like show pictures of things that I make if I'm talking to customers at the location. Because I do take a lot of orders at the location. 
that I'm not necessarily going to make right there. Uh, but primarily I use this for when I'm designing a light burn to burn whatever it is. I just have them glance up and say, hey, yeah, that looks good. I like that right before I hit the burn button. That keeps me from having to bring them around to the back of the enclosure. Uh, the enclosure is hand built, homemade, basic design. I went for as small and as tight fit as I could for an enclosure, but I wanted to keep it rustic. So it is made out of some cypress that I milled on my sawmill and just used, a, I cut it down to, uh, I think three eighths of an inch in thickness and then uh, sanded everything, put it together uh, and just made myself an enclosure. It is not airtight, but I do have an air purifier over here. And I'm gonna get the other camera out or move this one around so I can show you a little bit better look at what goes into this part. All right guys, this is kind of the business end of my setup. This is my little platform where the, uh, purifier sits and this is the Comgrow purifier that they sell as I've stated I would not call it a purifier as much as I would call it a reducer because it it doesn't purify the air uh, but it does however reduce the amount of, of, of smoke and particles that are escape from your enclosure now I've just kind of got this set in there uh, the hose is actually attached on the inside so that it doesn't move and I've used some uh, HVAC tape to kind of seal up around it so I don't lose my suction uh, and you have to take these out. Most of the time, to be honest with you, you can clean these. This was this was from the last couple of events. So I'm gonna clean that out really good and uh, make sure that it still functions as a filter. And if possible, I'll reuse it to avoid having to, to buy more or replace this one. Uh, so far, I've, I've been able to do that a lot and it, it still performs good enough for outdoor events. Um, I have all my cabling and everything built into the table. This is the battery backup right here. Uh, this is uh, a cyber power computer, uninterrupted power supply that you would use for your desktop computers or if you're into IT stuff. I mean, it's, it's a really good idea to have that on anything that you run. It serves as both surge protection as well as a battery backup. Uh, the machine, the battery will actually power the entire booth. Like right now, everything works. Uh, it's not plugged in, it's not turned on, it's not plugged into shore power. Here is the plug. I've got it right here. So technically I can start engraving here. Now I would be limited to however long the battery lasts, uh, but such as my lights and all of that, I can power those for probably about 30 minutes off of that battery before it dies. Uh, with the monitor, the laser, the laptop, the the lights and the air purifier all running and typically I've got a phone charging as well. It doesn't last awfully long, but it is a good backup to have. And it comes in handy when you're inside the uh, trailer at night trying to put stuff up, you can use these lights. So, but I've got a power strip over here for non-critical stuff that is plugged into the battery backup. That powers the LED lights inside the enclosure and the lights along the, uh, the top of the booth itself. Uh, as well as that's where I charge like my cell phone or my laptop or, or my tablet or whatever. Now, when you're not connected to power, you do get this annoying beep every few minutes that's supposed to alert you that you've lost power. So, but that thing works pretty well. Uh, this is the Cyber Power 1500. So I'll, uh, I'll, put a, uh, I'll put a link in the description for all this stuff. If you're interested, you can go check that out. Uh, it's very basic. Like I said, these are just some cheap lights that I picked up at either Amazon or Walmart. I'm not sure where those come from, uh, but I do have hooks that I can hang stuff. And I, I want to fix me a couple more display uh, plates for it and change some, some price tags and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. And that's why I decided to go ahead and make this video while I had it out. All right, guys. So another thing that I do at the events, this is the X-Tool D1. Uh, this is my 20 watt pro. Uh, I also have these jigs. These are my multi jigs. These things are set up to handle every blank that I have in my inventory. Uh, and those jigs just simply snap in there using my interchangeable jig kit. And uh, I confirm them, make sure that everything is correct using the camera. And then once I get everything lined up, when I first get set up at the event, generally I'm good to go. You know, I always frame just to be sure, but this does take a lot of the work out of it. Uh, the way the machine sets in here, and I'm gonna go ahead while I gotta take it out anyway to clean it and just show you how the machine goes in. 
Uh, I do have this little flap over here because I made the box really small. So the cables kind of stick out the side, but I have this little flap door over here. I unplug those. Those are uh, secured down here to the table and they just kind of hang uh, when I've got the machine out. I've got a quick disconnect inside the uh, enclosure here for the air assist that I can just disconnect the air there. And then once I do that, I just lift the machine up and it comes out and the machine's ready to be cleaned. And I'm gonna set that over here because that's fixing to happen here shortly. Uh, I also, you can see here, I use my uh, honeycomb holder kit to one, maximize my Z-axis travel with the X tool because if you don't use these or if you don't use some type of spacers, then you lose the thickness of your honeycomb in your adjustability. This also helps keep the honeycomb secure so it can't move. I don't have to worry about anything shifting or twisting. And it just, it just makes it look better in my opinion as well. So the honeycomb, to get it out, you just simply have to lift it up out of the jig holders and slide that guy out. And of course, most of the stuff will fall out of it that way. Uh, but there is some uh, little debris and stuff under there. I have a piece of metal sheeting under here. So I just use a little whisk broom and sweep everything out this way. That was kind of why there's nothing here to obstruct it. It just makes it clean out really quick. Uh, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna clean the honeycomb, I'm gonna clean the machine, and I'm gonna sweep out my little work area and blow it out with some compressed air since I'm outside. Uh, but the enclosure is pretty simple. The, uh, there is, this, this is all from JTEC Photonics. Uh, this is laser safety glass. And I had a little bit of a problem with my enclosure right here. This piece is wanting to shift on me. That's another reason I'm bringing it out. I got to shoot me a couple more staples in there to hold this because this piece, apparently when I put it together, I didn't put enough screws in there and it's rotated. And I noticed it the other day, it's letting the glass kind of slide down. So I'm gonna be shooting some staples in that to make that a little more, uh, functional, but the whole back end of it opens, and this is where I sit over here. Uh, I'll try to move the camera around where you can see the laptop a little better without knocking my camera off the porch here. So the laptop just sits right here beside it. These are, this is my HDMI, my USB for the camera, USB for the machine, and power. All of that, I've built myself like a little rail system underneath the table that just holds all those cables up, and they go over to where the uh, battery is sitting and everything stays plugged in. I also have the switch for the air assist right here on the leg. It's just kind of sitting in there. Uh, got a little sticky adhesive on the back of it to hold it in place. Uh, pretty much, I just leave the air assist running the, the entire event. Uh, this is the X-Tool air assist that is in here uh, because this whole setup basically is my old X-Tool setup from inside the shop. Uh, after I had built this enclosure specifically for the X-Tool, uh, I didn't want to rebuild it for any other machines, so that's why now my X-Tool machines are basically just for events because this is already configured to work with them and it works well. I'm not going to be changing anything. I do, and you will notice these, I do have a couple of pieces. These are pieces of clear acrylic. I drilled a hole in them, put a little screw in there to hold them in place, uh, guys. And what these two pieces of clear acrylic are for is they sit under the honeycomb here because with the X-Tool, honeycomb, I did have a little bit of a problem with sag in the middle of the honeycomb. And so by putting this clear acrylic in the middle, it just serves as a spacer. And as we know, typically a D1's not gonna cut a uh, clear acrylic. Now it will, it will etch it and get it nasty, but it's just a spacer that doesn't concern me if it's nasty. So I take that out before I clean all these little pieces out. Also have my interchangeable jig adapter in here. Uh, of course I'll be taking it out for the cleaning because I'm gonna blow this thing out with the air hose and get all that dust and stuff out of there. As well as this big spider web that somehow got built here and I overlooked it until the event the other night. So yeah, that's what a, that's what a spider web looks like after you've engraved around it for a little while. It turns yellow. So I'm gonna get to cleaning the machine and cleaning everything, get this video put together for you guys that were interested. Uh, like I said, not rocket science here, guys. It's just, this was an easy way for me to take all of my stuff, but minimize setup time and uh, maximize my convenience. I almost forgot, and some of you guys would have asked me about it. So before we move on, this is where the camera is mounted. I do run a fisheye camera in this enclosure. Uh, I made me a little box here because these cameras that I purchase are basically just little board cameras. And so I made a box that you can use to attach to the enclosure and then the camera sits down in the box. I just use some, uh, adhesive pads to uh, hold it in place. 
probably not the most accurate way of mounting the camera, guys, but it, I don't think the cameras will ever be 100% uh, accurate without using multiple views. So I'm just trying to get a really close uh, look with it. But this little box it just has a top right here that I use. It snaps back on top of there to uh, keep that thing from getting damaged or anything from hitting it, keeping dust and debris off of it. If I do get a little bit of a rain blow in or something like that, this will protect that little board camera. But it also makes it easy for me to replace it in the event that something were to happen to it. Uh, I also have over here, this is actually a valve that I can use to adjust the pressure of the air assist if I choose to, uh, but I've kind of found the sweet spot with my air assist and that's where that stays set at. Uh, with the X tool, it doesn't come with uh, variable power on the, on the air assist pump. So I added that, but pretty much I run it almost completely wide open. So just didn't want to leave that part out because you guys would have asked. Oh guys, don't miss this. This is the uh, lighted mirror, uh, my Clack Shack logo. It's got, uh, RGB lights in the back of it. Uh, this is a poplar frame that I, I basically took a Walmart mirror, engraved it, made a poplar frame for it, put some reflective material in the back and added lights around the edge. Uh, this thing changes colors or strobes or whatever to try to help draw attention to my booth. And then you can see here, this is just some really wide uh, wood that I, I milled. I milled it to like a half inch, maybe a little over a half inch to try to keep it light, but give me that rustic look for the front. And so far, I'm really digging that. Now I am probably gonna make me a couple more signs to go here. I think I'm gonna try to do like maybe a Facebook, YouTube type sign to go here just to kind of help advertise the channel when I'm out as well. All right guys, so moving up into the trailer, uh, I'm gonna try to show you everything that's up here. We'll start off on this wall. Uh, this is a smaller trailer. It's a 12 foot length box. So you kind of got to maximize your space and in doing so, just like in the shack guys, I like to hang things on the wall. Uh, this is my little fold out table that I use if I have enough room that I can set up, you know, this, this table as well as another. If I don't, a lot of times I use this behind me just to set my supplies and my blanks on and I throw everything on the main table on the portable clack shack. Uh, of course, got my oversized chairs because I'm a big guy, need nice comfortable chairs, you know, the hips and knees and everything give out after a while so i've got two chairs in here one for me and one for my helper or a lot of times guys some of, some of you guys will show up at an event and i like to have an extra seat so that uh, folks can sit down uh, i do use the ones that have the nice little uh, cup holders and all that these are just pieces of foam packing that i keep in here because a lot of times if i take a stove cover or two with me to an event I use these to kind of stack them, put in between them so I can stack them. And then I take a, uh, one of these uh, bungee cords and kind of bundle them to keep them from moving around and getting banged up back here. Uh, but of course I've got my backup machine in here as well. This is my original 10 watt D1 that I purchased uh, over a year ago. I think it's been like a year and a half ago. Uh, it's still in service. I just keep it clean and on standby in the trailer in the event that I need it. I prefer the 20 watt because it's faster. But if the 20 watt has an issue and I can't quickly fix it, it takes just a couple minutes to swap over back to my 10. Uh, up here is uh, in the front, I've got all these shelves that I have built. I use these plastic totes, plastic containers to put stuff in. I did learn early on that it helps to label things because I've got Christmas ornaments in here. I've got fall decorations and stuff in here. So depending on the type of the event and when it is, Sometimes this stuff just stays in the trailer. Sometimes it goes with me. Uh, I do have a tub or two in the shop right now that I'm working on getting uh, restocked. Uh, I do have some empty ones here that I've got to fill with some items to take to the Peach Jam. But after these events, you know, the inventory gets low and you got to turn around and, and kind of come back and restock. And that's what I'm doing now. I have storage up here. As always, I keep an extra couple of tarps on the trailer. If we do get caught by surprise with some rain, I can come into the trailer, grab those tarps. Also have a bucket of uh, bungee straps here to where I can strap everything down. I have another small bucket of bungee straps that I keep on the wagon. Uh, I do have my pop-up tent. This one's a, uh, I think this one's only a eight by eight or maybe a 10 by 10. I'm looking at getting a bigger one. I wanna get one with my logo and everything on it, but I haven't got that yet. Uh, I do keep also, of course, stakes. You know, I've got, a, I've got a regular hammer as well as a rubber hammer up here for putting the stakes in. 
trash can, and of course my little generator back there, and that is my wind generator. And we'll kind of touch on that because that's a pretty. If you're going to be doing these events, that's a pretty good bargain, uh, especially if you're having to buy all this stuff and get started. That little generator works really well. So the other wall is basically empty, guys. The one thing that I will say that I do keep in here is I keep my my little uh, Magellan cooler in here because I, I messed up a couple of weeks ago. I didn't take cooler with me. It was so busy I couldn't leave to go uh, look for you know water or Gatorade or anything. And so after that event, I've decided that this cooler is going to stay in the trailer. Uh, I used to keep it in the back of my truck when I had the old black truck, but the bed was a little bigger than the one that I have now, and so I really don't want the cooler banging around back there, but it, it fits well in here. Uh, I do leave it open uh, after events, which I could probably close it now, but I do that to make sure it dries out so it doesn't mildew inside the, the cooler. And I also have a cargo jack across the floor right here, and uh, it, it's basically... Uh, anybody that's ever drove a truck before, you know what that is. It's a, it's a bar, kind of like a shower rack, a shower bar, but it has a ratchet on it that you can use to kind of lock things in place. I just have it set on the floor, and when I roll the, the portable clack shack in here, it kind of scotches the front wheels to keep it from flying forward in the event that I have to brake real hard. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I just keep everything in here, and, and it makes it a lot easier so I can just like hook to the trailer and go because I've got the computer, I've got the machines with a backup machine, I've got all my supplies, all of my materials, and it just makes it much, much nicer. Uh, this trailer does have the capability, which I haven't done it yet, uh, but it does have the capability of being able to mount an inverter in here and charge things while in route. Uh, currently, I've got the back part of my pickup truck is so big and I've got plenty of outlets and charging ports in there. Uh, for now, I charge cameras and iPads and stuff like that because the truck has a total of like five USB ports in it. So I don't really need anything back here. But I did have originally have a plan to uh, put an inverter in here for charging things. But with the setup that I've got, the generator and the extra ports in the truck, it just didn't seem like it was really worth the trouble. So I'm going to move the camera outside because it's getting really, really hot in here <laughs> uh, with no wind blowing and the side door closed. But... Uh, that might actually have helped if I'd opened that door earlier. But I'm gonna get the generator out. And I kind of show you the generator because a lot of you have asked about what kind of power I use. So, all right guys, a lot of you have asked me also about the generator that I use. And so far I'm pleased. Uh, just got through doing last week's event and looking at the little fuel gauge here because it has like a little view glass. I've got roughly a quarter of a tank of gas left in this thing. It only holds around a gallon. Don't quote me on that, but it's not much. Uh, I can fill it up several times with five gallons of gas and not have to purchase any more gas. Uh, the one thing I do like about it is it does have the seal here on the gas can, and you can hear it when I release it. Uh, it's letting that, that those gas fumes come out, and yeah, there's some gas fumes in there because it's been sitting outside in the sun. Uh, but you have to turn the fuel, turn this on to vent the fuel, uh, but that's handy when you're storing it because when you close this, it keeps those fumes from getting out into your trailer or vehicle or whatever. So the first thing you want to do is turn that on to on. And on this side around here, this is where all your controls, all your power outlets and everything are located. Uh, we'll just go over the kind of the outputs right here. It's got two 120 volt outlets. Uh, these are apparently rated, it's showing uh, their NEMA five to 20 R. So I'm, I'm gonna go with those being uh, maybe 20 amp capable. Uh, this is the DC, like for, you know, just like your general power point, like in most vehicles, uh, the cigarette lighter plug, so to speak. Uh, it also has two USB ports right here. Uh, these are DC 5 volt. You've got a 1 amp and a 2.1 amp as well. Uh, the 2.1 amp is the more of the fast charge for like iPads and stuff like that. You can plug directly into this or you can, you know, run off of like I do with my booth. I have things plugged up into it. Uh, it has an eco mode. I usually run in eco mode because I've never had a problem of overpowering it, needing it to run at full throttle using the setup that I have. Uh, these machines also have this uh, parallel connect here so that you can actually run multiple machines. Uh, you can daisy chain them. I've never done that, but in the video it said you could. And that was one reason I went with this one was if I did want to use it for something other than just a portable shack later on, I could get another one. In so it. to crank it, you simply have to pull the choke out 
This is the uh, fuel cutoff. You have off, and then you have fuel off and on. So I'm gonna go ahead and choke it. I got the fuel on, and we'll just see how hard it is to crank, guys. Uh, like I said, I haven't haven't used it since uh, the last event this past Friday. Well, no, I didn't use it this Friday night. The Friday before, so it's been a little over a week since I've cranked this thing. And there it is. This is inside the shack, guys. Uh, they're not gonna let it run long. Nobody freak out. I just wanted to show you how actually quiet it is. Uh, let me take this thing and kind of move it over here by the door so that uh, it's away from my microphone. All right, so I moved the generator over to the door with the exhaust blowing out the door, guys. But the generator itself is still inside the shack and that's as loud as it is. So. I'm pretty happy with the uh, the noise level of the machine. It works well, it's portable, and it has enough power to do what I want. So let me just show you where it's sitting and uh, let you listen. There's the generator, guys, and you can hear the audio level. I'm going to be quiet for a second. That's inside the building. Now, obviously, for safety, I'm gonna go cut that thing off and we're gonna wrap this video up. All right, guys, y'all asked for it and you got it. It's awfully hot outside and I have forgotten how nice it is to be able to come back into the shack and work inside. But unfortunately, a lot of the stuff I'll be doing today is gonna to be outside and maybe I'll get a little sun in the, in the meantime. Can, you know, brighten these, uh, lighten these legs down a little bit. But guys, I just want to make sure everybody understands, you know, to do a, to be able to do these events, you don't have to have all this stuff. I did not have everything that I have set up in the beginning. Uh, two and a half years ago when I started doing the Clack Shack and I started doing woodworking and then slowly got into laser engraving, every penny that I made, I reinvested to try to make things bigger and make things a little better and a little more user friendly. The first three or four events that I did, uh, the, the very first one I did, I did have the portable clack shack table. I had got it built, uh, but I had to use my utility trailer and just tarp everything and pray it didn't rain because I had nowhere to put anything that would be completely dry. Uh, and then after doing a few events and after selling a lot of woodworking products from the shack, I was able to take and reinvest that money and expand, expand, and to the point to where I was able to go get, get the trailer. And within... Uh, Within a year, I was able to get that thing paid off so that I could have it for events. And sometimes you have to step out on a limb and do stuff like that. I don't like to do it, but I didn't have the money laying around. So luckily, uh, I was able to take a significant down, down payment and then just pay the rest off as I went. And I got that thing, and it has really, really made life a lot easier on me now. Uh, I find that I'm more uh, apt to go to events and to take my stuff to events uh, and it just makes it a lot easier. So if you were to be at the Peace Jam, you'll get to see the setup in person. But if, you have, if you're not going to be there, I'm going to try to do some video. I'm going to take the drone and get pictures and get a little bit better pictures of the setup and how it looks once we're there and once everything's configured. But uh, guys, if you, if, if you love what you're doing and you enjoy this type of thing, like I said, just keep working at it. Uh, these ideas, maybe some of them will be helpful to you. You may need to downsize, downscale your operation if you don't have the means to transport something as big as what I've got. But there's always ways you can improvise and get that thing put together and get it to where it works. Uh, like I said, I stick to mostly the small items that are done on site. I do take some of my larger stuff with me, but that's usually not what I sell a lot of. You know, if you do sell one of those, it's a good hit, but I don't lean heavily into that because there's so much competition in that realm and there's so many other people that do that. So I try to stick with the small stuff because I found a little niche that nobody else really does and that is on site made things. Uh, and there's nobody that I'm aware of in my area within the four counties around me that does it and so that was kind of a void there and I decided to try to fill that void and it's worked out pretty well for me so far. So I hope the video was helpful. Uh, if you want any of the stuff or you're looking at any of the stuff that I've, that I've mentioned in the video, I will be putting links down below. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to a couple of folks and so uh, hopefully, you know, Big O over at Big O's Trailers, uh, hopefully you'll get to see this video and see that I've put that trailer to good work. 
But until then, until next time, guys, uh, if keep the questions coming. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more related content. And for you guys that told me, you know, you wanted to see the setup and requested the video, I appreciate that. Sometimes the biggest dilemma that I have with having a YouTube channel is I don't know what people want to watch. So it's really nice when you guys can give me some feedback and give me some input and let me know what might be interesting to you. And I hope I did a good enough job explaining everything in this video. Uh, it's not all that complicated, so I think I covered it pretty well. But let me know down below what you think of the setup. And uh, if you want to go join the uh, Laser Engraving community page and send some pictures of your setup and share it with everybody else, that'd be cool as well. Also, don't forget Sunday nights, 7 p.m., Steve and I from over at Ventari's Workshop, we do our live video and uh, just sit around and talk about laser related stuff. Of course, there is some, you know, banner back and forth. Uh, occasionally, we have, <laughs> we we have some pretty funny moments occasionally. Uh, so that would be interested. But if you find yourself just wanting to come hang out with some like-minded people that like making things and like playing with lasers, then come check us out Sunday nights and uh, see what you think about it. But until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.